So are you a consumer or are you a contributor? Are you genuinely of the mindset that the world should bend around you? Are you waiting for people to come into your life to heal you, to fix you, to lead you, to guide you, to wipe your backside, to pay you, to give you money, to create opportunity? You know, a lot of people complain, they go through life and they say, you know, you know, I'm just waiting for the right opportunity. You know, opportunity always passes me by. Have you ever known anyone to say something like that? The interesting thing about opportunity is that it's absolutely everywhere. The only problem with opportunity is that many people fail to recognize it when it eventually comes along because opportunity has this tendency of coming dressed in disguise. It comes dressed in a pair of overalls and it looks like hard work. Um, a lot of people expect that opportunity should be something really easy. It should be a quick fix. It should be overnight riches and overnight success. And the truth of the matter is that, you know, abounding results in life uh, generally come about through years, sometimes decades of hard work. Um, I just want to state here before we kind of really kind of kick off is that going back 10 years ago, I was broke. I was, uh, I was almost homeless. You know, I was very, very fortunate to have met um, a, a guy who let me live with him for around about six to nine months until I was able to generate enough money to get myself back on an even keel once again. Uh, going back 13 years ago, I would have been one of the most self-consumed and mindless individuals I'd ever come across in my life. I would approach my relationship from the attitude of what can I get? Like this, va this vacuum, this vacuum was governing, governing me. I would you know, approach new relationships, friendships, working relationships, I would approach work and employment from this all-consuming perspective. I was in it and in life for what I could get. When I got what I wanted, I was happy, I was content. When I didn't get what I wanted, I was angry, I was sad, I was anxious, I was depressed, I was diseased and disordered and all that stuff. Or so I thought. All right. Attitude is the basis of all output. Attitude is the basis of all output. If you like the outputs of your life, or if you do not like the outputs of your life, look to your attitude, which is responsible for generating them. All right, here's a basis for attitude. Um, consider the story of these two men, uh, Darn, Jack, think about the two brothers, think about your own circumstances, right? How about if I was to tell you right now that you can do anything that you put your mind to? If you will but commit to a process of working hard and persevering, upskilling, learning, improving yourself, developing yourself, what would you say? There is nothing that you cannot achieve through your life if you will but commit to the process of working hard. I won't do it. I will not work hard. I will not upskill. I will not learn. I will not push myself. I will not take responsibility for my life. This is where some people are at. Kind of like groveling animals. Right, you then have some people. I can't do it. I can't grow. I can't improve. I can't become stronger because I'm riddled with mental disease and mental sickness and mental disorders because all of the professionals and all the authorities and all the experts said so, who have no plans for my life whatsoever. I can't change, I can't improve. It's my get out of jail free card. I was born this way. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm helpless. Sound like someone you know, possibly a neighbor, right? Maybe a friend, maybe a sister or something. I want to change, I want to grow, I'm not sure if I can, I'm not sure if I can, but I want to change, hence the reason I'm taking this course. I don't want to live out my days like a groveling animal, immersed in a world of irrelevant emotion, overwhelmed by myself, 
overwhelmed by fear of social interaction, missing out on the promotions and the advancements that I want because I'm just too scared or timid to pursue the things that I really want to pursue. I've got a vision for building some sort of business or building a home or asking that guy out or asking that girl out. I've got goals, I've got dreams of aspirations. There's things that I want to do, but there's something stopping me. I'm hoping that this is you. I'm hoping that you are here wanting to change. Because if you're here saying, I can't change, I won't change, I have diseases and disorders and there's all these reasons why I can't change and won't change, no one can help you, all right? Um, you might have to go around a few more laps of destitution before you absolutely sicken yourself of the results and outcomes that you're generating. Generally, it's only those people who are sick and tired of the outcomes that they're producing. Um, sometimes some people have to literally hit rock bottom hard enough before they're willing to change anything of their lives. Some people are pretty close to rock bottom, but sometimes people need to go a little bit lower, all right? It's a choice, it's an option. Some people allow their pride and ego to get in the way of their own progression in life. Right, if I'm saying to you that you can put anything, you can do anything that you put your mind to. I will not. I can't, no I can't. Oh, I want to. There's some things that I want to do with my life. H how? How can I grow? How can I improve? How can I start to get better results? We're now starting to become a little bit inquisitive. All right, how inquisitive are you? <laughs> like seriously, all right? How inquisitive are you? Um, are you dismissive of new ideas that come your way that don't necessarily fit in with your personal narrative? Is your personal narrative the only right personal narrative in the world? Or is it just one of 8.6 billion? I guarantee you it's just one of 8.6 billion, right? I'll guarantee you something else, that you're not right 100% of the time. <laughs> All right, how do I grow? How do I improve? How do I become more resilient? How do I kind of take the blows? How do I take the highs alongside the lows? How can I be okay with challenge and confrontation when it comes my way? Because life is tough. Life is this ongoing transition. It's a process of change. If we are not changing and growing, then we're going backwards, we're dying. So I can offer you a few suggestions, and I will offer you a few suggestions. And once I've offered you these suggestions, will you try? Will you try? Or won't you try? Or have you already decided that if you try, you'll fail? And you've assumed that you can't do it? Because it's just a perspective, it's just an attitude, right? Darn sat on the streets. He decided that he wouldn't change, all right? Whereas Jack went for, <laughs> went for the, the runway, went modeling, all right? He decided, I'll give it a try. How do I do it? He done some research and he gave it a shot and then decided that he could do it and he succeeded, all right? Once we know how something's possible, we realize that we can change, we can improve, we can, we can grow, we can develop, all right? Understanding our abilities is a learning process. Until we've grown to understand what we're capable of, we will forever say that we won't or that we can't. All right, it's just attitude. It's not universal truth, and it most certainly is not a fact that's set in stone. All right, it's centered around belief and perspective. All right, once we understand that we can do something that we previously thought we couldn't, we're left with a choice. Will we or won't we? Do we go back down to the gutter or do we step up and pursue whatever it is that we want to pursue? This is what mental toughness is all about. It's not about going down to the gym and building up your muscles, all right? It's about committing to the process of persevering and pursuing the things that we actually want more of in life. All right, because challenge will come your way and sometimes some people will say no. Sometimes you're not gonna get what you want, but you know what, it's okay because you're not entitled to getting what you want. The question is, how will you handle rejection or delay when they come your way, which they will come your way? All right, that's what resilience and mental toughness is about. Right, a basis for all attitude. 
Success is at the top of the ladder and it's gonna mean something different for every single one of us. So certainly I'm not gonna quantify success here for you. For me, success looks like a healthy network of social relationships, a healthy relationship with my wife, a prosperous, growing business, um, increased profits, uh, increased productivity, heightened efficiency. That's what success looks like for me. I don't like to put success in a box. Many people do, but I'd strongly recommend against it. So what I'm saying here, all right, there's a journey, there's a process that we can take towards becoming untouchable. Because once you've decided that you can do something or that you will do something, no one's gonna get in your way. And this is kind of where resilience comes from, all right? It's the journey to becoming untouchable. All right, so when we're saying I won't do it, I can't do it, this is us down in the gutter of life. I think that's what Steve Covey was referring to, groveling animals kind of rummaging around in the dirt, looking for kind of scraps and mortals to eat. I can't take responsibility for my own life or I won't take responsibility for my own life because I've got mental diseases and behavioral disorders and I've got all this stuff wrong with me. That's why I can't take responsibility for driving my own life in a productive and fruitful way. All right. There's levels of insight and awareness that we must grow through. Not go through, grow through. G-R-O-W. The process of personal growth can be a challenging one. It can be a daunting one. It can be hard work, which is why not all people go through it, all right? Because it ain't easy. You know, it is, there is a, a penthouse apartment of life, all right? There is a stage of life we can reach where we're no longer bound by fears or anxieties or um, apprehension or things like that. There's a stage of life we can reach where everything becomes possible. We realize that we're only ever one strategy away from achieving anything that we want to. All right, we're only um, one body of information away from understanding something new about ourselves or about the world or about other people, or about marriage, or about business, or about entrepreneurship. People have a tendency of saying, I can't and I won't, when they simply don't know how to. And because some people don't know how to, and they haven't learned how to in the first 25 years of their life, they assume that it's impossible for all people to. And we couldn't be further from the truth, all right? Resilience is about pursuing the goals and objectives that we aspire to, regardless of what outcomes or resistance comes our way, all right? You might be rejected and some people fail sometimes. You know, my goodness, in business, I must have failed a dozen times, two dozen times. Doesn't stop me going though. Every time I fail, um, it just equips me with a new depth of learning, a new depth of understanding, of knowledge, of wisdom, of insight, of understanding in marriage. Right, my wife and I, Karen, we have been up and down like that. For the first five years, it was very, very tough. The first five years of our marriage, we came very, very close to separating and divorcing. All right, but then we learned that it was possible to grow together. Right, we learned a new process. We became more resilient. We both became mentally stronger. We had to for each other. It was important, all right. So I want, here, I want to here guide you through the journey, um, a journey that you can embark upon today to becoming untouchable, if you want to, if it's even, if you think it's even plaus plausible, all right? You perhaps maybe think it's impossible, all right? But let us understand these ideas first and then make a conscious decision once this teaching is complete. Some people go through life with a certain attitude and we're still talking about attitude here that life happens to me. You know, life happens to me. I'm a, I'm a victim of circumstance. I am facing situations and circumstances outside of my control. The economy is a certain way. The politicians are doing some certain stuff. It's raining outside. Um, my health is as it is. I've lost a limb. I've lost my pocket money. My girlfriend dumped me. My business failed. 
Life just happens to me and I'm so disenfranchised and sad and disempowered because I have no control over any of these things. It's a mindset, it's an attitude and it leads some people into this pit of disempowerment that they stay into for anything up to an entire lifetime. And my friends, I want to open this course up by, by very, very boldly stating that life does not have to be this way for anyone. And this is some pretty darned good news. All right. People down in this gutter of life feel disempowered, helpless, like they are incapable of changing anything about their lives. Right? People around here, all they're looking for is a little bit of mental health. So they go to deep breathing exercises and they'll go and speak to the therapists and the counsellors. Say, will you heal me? Will you give me a cuddle? Will you make me feel better about myself? Will you love me? Will you fill my internal vacuum? Like little leeches, like, me, 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 give me what I want, make me feel happy, make me feel complete. I'm not mocking here. Well, I kind of am, just a little bit. Please forgive me, right? I'm offering you a contrast. I'm offering you something to relate yourself to. Is this where you're at? Is this where you really want to be? Is this all that you aspire to in life? Being a groveling animal, dependent on other people to prop you up and sustain you? Is this really what you think life's about? I know you don't. You know you don't. You know there's more to life than this, which is why you're taking a mental toughness masterclass with this bald-headed, crazy Scottish guy. All right? So this is the gutter. This is where the groveling animals live. But we progress. When we commit to the process of exploring new perspectives, considering new ideas, reading books, studying new materials, taking risks, stepping outside of the comfort zone, we eventually realise that, oh, hang about, life isn't just something that happens to me. I'm not a helpless victim here. Life happens by me. The outcomes of my life, if I have a chain of failed relationships behind me, what's the one common denominator? Was my previous partner bad and the partner behind that bad? and the partner who came before that bad? How about if I've gone from job to job to job to job and none of these jobs just worked out? What's the common denominator? Was it really because, well, that manager was bad and that manager was bad and that manager was bad and that person was bad and that was just a bad organisation? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. This is what the disempowered people say. It's what the grovelling animals say. What the mature men and women say or look to identify as the part they are playing in their own process. The one common denominator that strings together all the outcomes of your life is you. Everywhere you have been, you were there. Everywhere you go, you are there. Every relationship you have or have had, you were in it. <laughs> Right, There is a degree of influence that you have over all of your outcomes. Granted, there are some things that you have no control over. You have no control over how people are for you, whether people like you, whether people judge you, whether people hate you. You have no control over the economy. Sometimes some organisations have to lay people off. Sometimes some people get really confused within themselves in life. Sometimes you'll be rejected. Sometimes you'll get hurt by people. Hurt people have a tendency of hurting people. Rejected people have a tendency to reject people um, to try to prevent themselves from experiencing more rejection. Right? Come on. The world's a bit of a crazy place sometimes to live in, isn't it? But it's wise. It's mature. It's sensible just to look at our lives objectively and say, you know what, life actually happens by me. I am responsible for the outcomes that I generate. Granted, sometimes things happen, stuff happens. Sometimes bad things happen to okay people, but it's just life. I'm actually not entitled to having all things my way all of the time. I'm not entitled to getting everything that I want. 
I'm not entitled to the world bending and revolving around me. I'm not entitled to people calling me by the, by the pronouns that I choose. I'm not entitled to people appeasing me or bending over backwards to keep me happy. If I really adopt this attitude in life, all I'm actually going to do is repel people away from me. All right. Now, don't get me wrong. I am an advocate of individualism to a degree. All right. Individualism I've seen over the last 20 years has resulted in more people becoming socially isolated than perhaps at before at any other point in history, right? It's great expressing oneself, oneself authentically. It's great being true to who you are and all that kind of stuff. But if you being true to who you are ends up dissociating you from society or making you unrelatable within the workplace, more fool you, all right? Society holds itself together through a degree of conformity. All right, I have conformed to a degree throughout my entire life. And I'm a pretty hardcore non-conformist, in case you haven't already noticed. All right, in the military, believe it or not, when I joined the army at the age of 16, right, I joined the army at the age of 16 because I wanted freedom. So I joined the military where I had no freedom whatsoever. But the freedom that I experienced in the army was a newfound freedom to grow, which is more opportunity to grow than what I had previously within the family home who looked at me as a child. I didn't want to be looked upon as a child at the age of 16, so when I joined the army, I was addressed as a man. and I was given the opportunity to grow and become a man. Children think as children think. Adolescents think as adolescents think. Emotionally unstable people think as emotionally unstable people think. Mature men think as mature men think. Mature women think as mature women think. Mature men and mature women understand that there's a time, there's a place for expressing oneself authentically. And then there's a time and a place to conform slightly because without conformity, there can be no social cohesion. And without social cohesion, a society will inevitably collapse.